The question I've been, last, uh, been being asked a lot lately is, um, what is going to happen with the real estate market with the increase of interest rates? I mean, that's a great question. Um, I honestly don't think much is gonna happen. I think that you're probably going to see some first time home buyers that are a little skittish because their parents or friends or family got into a market that was unrealistic. Okay. You're talking about rates in the two to 3% range just is unfathomable. It's just not something that's a reality uh, long term. You know, as an example, you know, back in the 1980s, which that would be most of your grandparents, I would say, we're looking at mortgage rates like in the 18% range. Right. In the early 2000s, we were refinancing people in the 8 9% range. And even like four years ago, rates were about where they are now. I think this is kind of where rates should be uh, for the long haul. It's just kind of making some first time home buyers a little skittish, but the great thing, at least in the mortgage industry, is, is the pre-approval applications are exactly the same as they have been over the last two years. So are higher rates gonna scare some people? Yeah, but at the end of the day, low inventory, supply and demand, you know, we're still pre-approving people who are fully aware rates are in the 5% range right now. So do you think the increase in interest rates will somehow balance that? Because we are in a seller, experience in a seller's market right now. Of course. Do you think we will get a little bit more normalized uh, to the normalized market where it's kind of buyers and sellers market? That would be what one would assume. So I, I think it'll probably help a little bit, but I think we're gonna be in a seller's market for the next couple of years. Mm -hmm. um, now, of course, unless something really crazy happens and rates do go where they were back in 2000, 2001, 2002, in the 89 percent range, then it'll really scare off buyers. But I just don't think economically that's a reality. So, you know, I think we're going to still be in a seller's market specifically in South Florida just because inventory doesn't pop up overnight. And again, like I said, we're doing as many pre-approvals for new buyers as we were a year ago, two years ago in the heat of this market. So. There's plenty of buyers, there's just not enough homes. So I just don't see how inventory completely changes overnight. I think that it'll help a little. Mm -hmm. It's probably already helped some because there's not 50, 60 offers on every property at normal price points these days. But I think it's still gonna be a little difficult in terms of inventory. So I don't, I don't think it's gonna change this into a buyer's market overnight. Okay, so another question that um, everyone seems to wanted to know the uh, right now: Do you think we, there is a possibility? And of course, nobody has a crystal ball. Um, but do you think there is a possibility when um, eight, ten percent will become a new normal? It will the interest rates uh, continue to increase? I, I don't think that's possible. But you know, like I said, rates were at eight, nine percent not that long ago. Mm -hmm. You know, twenty years ago. Mm -hmm. um, seems like a long time, but it really isn't. Uh, price points were also tremendously lower 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the balance of, of higher rates back then for lower price points made sense. Now, with the higher price points and affordability being a concern, I don't see how we could have rates in the 8-9% range. If anything, I think that they're going to trickle back down to be somewhere in the fours over the next coming months, mm -hmm. potentially towards the end of the summer. It's just really, really bad for the economy if rates were to go that high. Yes. Then it's going to, you know, the housing market was brought down to its knees, you know, back, you know, in the mortgage meltdown. And, you know, we don't want to see that again. It won't happen the same way because last time if you had a pulse, you can get a mortgage. Mm -hmm. Now it's a big pain in the ass <laughs> to get a mortgage, you know. Um, but I just don't see it being the same. So... I just don't see how that's possible. I think it would really, really, really be a poor, poor decision economically for the government and or lending institutions to increase long-term rates. It doesn't make any sense. So basically, we um, kind of experienced the hike um, when, and then from from what I'm hearing is that it's gonna kind of like stay that way for a little, uh, for a while. And then, you know, maybe we will have another increase. And then, like, this is just my, so yeah, it's, it's a good observation, it is, without a doubt. So, so long-term rates and, and, and mortgage lenders or lenders in general, long-term rates kind of see the writing on the wall months ahead of time. Mm -hmm. You know, the feds have been talking about raising interest rates, which isn't directly tied to long-term rates, 
but feds have been talking about higher rates for months, yeah, a year. Yeah. So the mortgage market's like, okay, so months in advance, they're preparing for higher rates. Again, not a direct, you know, derivative of, of prime or the Fed rate, but we're speculating months in advance and, and good economic outlook equals higher interest rates. Evidently, there's really good economic outlook. Mm -hmm. Jobs are great, things are looking good. Yeah, we're fighting inflation, supply and demand issues, mm -hmm. but that'll eventually subside too. I think we're gonna be in a weird, funky thing for a couple of years, just because of inflation, interest rates, the housing market, no supply, you know, tons of demand. It's gonna be interesting, but I think that, you know, the powers that be, whoever they are, you know, need to keep rates at least here or a little lower to keep this thing going. Because you know, if, if, they, if they bump them up anymore, then we'll have bigger problems than we have now with inflation. And um, what is the one um, advice you would give someone who is actively is on the market shopping for rates right now? That's a great question. I mean, again, don't listen to to your friends and family and everybody else who <laughs> says rates right are rates are in the twos and the threes. That's really a foregone conclusion, and it's not like you missed the boat if you're buying a primary residence. You know, rates in the fives are still historically fantastic rates, mm -hmm. and not only that. Number one, you're not throwing money away at rent. Right. Let's say your rent's three thousand a month. That's thirty six, forty thousand dollars a year. You're just throwing away. Mm -hmm. When you own a home, obviously you have the interest deductions, the interest that you pay that you mm -hmm. can write it off. You have the property tax deductions that you can write off as well. In addition to building your own equity position, putting money towards the property that you own. So I don't so care. So the end of the day, it still makes sense. Yeah, I don't care where rates are at. Again, unless. They get really freaky, but I don't think that's going to happen. With rates where they are now, even a potentially little bit of a shift upward or downward, it's still a great time for for people buying, you know, as end users and as a primary residence. Tax deductions, interest, property taxes, and building an equity position. Take take three thousand dollars a month rent times three years. I mean, it's ridiculous. You could have so put that towards the equity of your home. Is if the time is right for you, go for it. Always, always. Investors and, and debt servicing on properties, if your financing is a little more complex than, than an end user, but even then, you can still write off all sorts of things as an investor when you're, you know, you can still write off the interest via schedule of your taxes. So, mm -hmm. you know, investors, I have a little different look and, and take on that, but as a primary residence, I don't care what market you're in, it's always a good time to buy a primary residence. Perfect, thank you so much.